the first thing you've seen me do is sketch this out here with pencil. I've just used graphite and then I've sealed it with a fixative so it doesn't blend in with the paints. And so I just wanted a good sketch of just the mountain and some of the trees in the foreground just to give me an idea of where I want to go with this, kind of the blueprint. And uh, I want to start blocking in this painting. So I've, let's go over to my palette here. And I'm going to be using a, they've got a new brush here. Um, this is the same as the old brush that I've used in the past. Just, you can see how much I've used that old one, really worn it down. So I've got a new one. And um, this is just a flat brush, a one inch wide flat brush. I believe it's sable hair. And it's got just some nice firm push to it. I want to move that paint around. I don't want to be too flexible. I've got this other paintbrush here and it was just, had too much flex, didn't have enough push. So I like this one. It's just a little bit more firm and it'll move the paint around for me better on the canvas. So I've got some titanium white. This is my neutral gray, mixing gray, carbon black, light blue permanent, cobalt blue, naphthol red, and cad orange. And I've got golden fluid acrylics for the red and black, and the rest are Liquitex soft bodies. So what I'm gonna do to start is I'm going to start with the sky. You've seen me do this in the past. I've got some water in the brush. And you've seen me do this in the past. I work from back to front. So that's what we're gonna do today again. And I'm basically just gonna take some white mixed with my light blue permanent. So it's going to be fairly lightly colored. It's not going to have too much saturation. I don't want the sky to detract from the landscape too much. We'll just kind of see how it goes for now. So I'm just going to start by getting a nice layer of blue across the sky. Kind of roll up that paint on my brush. I'm just going to mix some more. I always end up using more white than I think. So I've got some water mixed with this, not a ton at the moment, just enough to make it flow nice. Really just want to make sure I cover the canvas. Okay, so I'm going down to about right there. And I might go down in the middle a little bit further. Okay, I'm going to wash my brush. Squeeze out that water. And I'm going to take some white. I'm going to add some red and some gray. Not a lot, just a small amount. So I'm going to start by just adding a hint of clouds. No wrong way to do this. Just want to get this color on. So you can see that tiny bit. You might be able to see it. I can really well. That tiny bit of red and gray really affected the white. Makes a big difference in the color. So you don't need much. And grab some more white. More gray and red. Mix it in. I'm 
I'm kind of using the, the, the edge of the brush, the narrow side, thicker side for down low here, just to cover. And then as I get further up into the blue sky, kind of just rotating the brush, just kind of have to use what works for you. Okay. For now, I'm going to just leave this. I'm going to let that dry. That's a really nice first step to this painting. Perfect. Wash my brush. Okay. Wash it really well there because I'm probably going to set it down for right now. And I'm going to switch to, got an older brush, just smaller flat brush, and it's really frayed. And uh, I'm going to start with the mountain next. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take some red with some orange, reddish orange. I'm going to add some gray to this. Let's see what I get. Okay, that might be all right. Now I'm gonna mix that. I'm not gonna mix all of it, but I'll mix some of it here into the white. Maybe about half of that. See how that color goes. So it's kind of a very muted red and gray. Okay, now. I'm going to test it out here. I think that I'm going to want this to be more muted, desaturated. So I'm going to add more white and gray to this. I'm just going to mix it in. I remember this is a blocking in stage, so a lot of it is going to be very undetailed. Just want that nice coat of paint. You see it's going on very thick. And I'll cover up some of the sketch that I have for the trees. That's all right. That's easy to get back to. I'm just looking for anywhere where this color or a color that's close to this might exist. This is such a neat mountain. I remember sitting there as the sun was getting really low in the sky and glanced up at just the right moment to see just this amazing view, just the way that the sun was touching everything. It was just so unique, so nice. Just really enjoyed this view. I knew I had to paint it from the start. Okay. So we're kind of getting there. I'll just go ahead and fill in all the way down to here. Now, this area, there's some areas, I'll go ahead and add some of it here. There's some areas that have more orange than red. So I'm gonna take some orange and mix it in with our mixture. More white and gray, probably more white. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Hmm, I think I could even have more white to this. And orange. Small amount though, you can see I'm using very sparingly using the color. Okay, that might be pretty close. So we've got kind of a, a shoot here. 
big rock slide. It's beginning to form a bowl in the mountain, and that's going to be more of a of an orange. Probably needs to even go lighter than that. I don't know how light I'm going to be able to get it at the moment. There's a couple areas where this color is going to exist as well. Now the paint's still kind of wet underneath, so it's allowing me to blend and fade this in. You have to work quick. But it's a nice magical moment in the, the consistency of the paint to really blend it well. It's kind of sticky, but not enough where you can't. It's, it's just the right amount, it seems like. Okay. Well, almost there. I'm just going to put some random spots of this color, just kind of add a little bit of variation. This is going to be nice. Okay. Looking good. I'm going to just leave it as is. I'm going to need to get some more white. Got a big jar of white because I do, as you can see, go through a lot of it. Now, the next thing, I'm going to get a little more controlled with this, so I'm going to switch to a filbert brush that has a nice, clean, flat edge. Really nice for, for making sharp edges. And I'm going to take some cobalt blue, a little bit of that blue permanent, light blue permanent, not, not a ton, though. I'm going to add some of this neutral gray. some white. Just kind of experimenting, adding colors together, just seeing what I like. Okay, this, mm, touch more white. Might be about right. We'll start with that. So we've got a shadow back here. I think I can get some more light blue permanent and maybe some white with this. Let's try that. Just a touch lighter. And it's a start anyways. I'm just going to create a nice clean line between the red and the blue. And I'm just kind of fade that off. Right there. Okay. Not bad. Start with that. I got fairly close to the color I'm after. And I'll go back to that brush I was just using. It's going to be a little wider. 
allow me to move a bit faster here. This area is just not as important. I'm going to mix up some more of this color. And as I get up into this area, it gets a little bit fishy here. There's some different colors going on. Just go ahead, just go ahead and block it in all the way. Make sure we have good coverage no matter what. So just gonna fill it in. It's gonna change a bit though. Okay, now. As I go down into, into the trees, I'm just gonna go ahead and block in this color all the way. I don't wanna miss any parts that I might want some blue. So I'm gonna lose the tree detail. Again, the, the, the sketch was more of just a blueprint, just knowing that the trees are gonna be somewhere right there. And I'm going around some of the ideas that I had for the trees, but for the most part, kind of just going to lose them. Okay. Looking good. Now, before I do anything, I'm just going to let everything dry and I'll come back to it in just a little bit and kind of figure out where I'm going to go next. I think I'm just going to keep adding detail to the background before I block in anything down below. So I'm going to leave it as is. We'll come back. Okay, so this is nice and dry. And the next thing I've been thinking about is how to really start. We, we basically want to start bringing these colors. Now I'm talking about the mountains here. We want to start bringing portions of these colors closer to the result that we're after. And so some of the color that the color that's on here is going to work for that finished result but a lot of it we've really only got two colors maybe three and we want to basically start like let's take the blue for example we want to take that and start to bring portions of it closer to the end result and so obviously what we're going to need to do is start adding different tones and shades begin to build up contrast some different saturations throughout the blue to give the illusion of some trees because of course we have trees we have meadows some rock slides so the overall if you look at the original reference that we have overall we have some more of a more vibrance and more more vibrant and richer blues down low and they kind of fade into some of this color up here so i'm going to start with that darker 
more rich blue. And I've kind of mixed some tests over here to see what I want. And it's gonna be something similar to what I have here. So I'm gonna start, there's gonna be a lot of cobalt blue in this. And some white. And a little bit of black. I don't know, I don't wanna overdo it to start with, so I've just mixed a little bit of white and black into that. I think I want some more, and I could try some gray, but white and black makes eh, virtually the same thing. So this is really rich. Just kind of testing that out. I think I could go with some more white. And see, that's a lot darker. Might be, might be pretty close. A little bit more gray. I think we'll call it good. Okay. Now, the texture that we're after is, of course, little trees, just little effects of trees. But before we get there, we want to shape the meadows and patches of trees as a whole before we add specific detail. So I'm gonna start, and I'll probably just stick with, this is just an old filbert brush, and it's got some frayed hairs on it. I think that'll work to start. Give us a little variety. Got a little water in that to keep it moving. And what I'm gonna do Just start blocking in where I think this color is going to be. I'm going to take it somewhat slow. And I'm going to start out by trying to sketch around the areas where I think there's going to be a meadow at. So these meadows are going to more or less be the color that we already have here and the trees are gonna be this darker blue. So I'm gonna be fairly rough to begin here. Yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect. We could have meadows wherever we choose. But I wanna be close. So we got meadows there. I think I'm gonna have another one over here. Some more water, keep that flowing. And as I get up further up into this blue, it's gonna become lighter. So I wanna stick down low with this color to begin with. Just shaping the idea, and it looks kind of weird, kind of messy right now. I'm basically drawing around where I think those meadows are going to be, and I'm going back and forth and kind of looking at the reference that I have. Okay, pretty close there. Start with that. All right, now basically, now it's gonna make more sense. I'm gonna go in between and block in this color.
and I'm going to sort of fade it as I get higher because I'll end up covering it up. And now this is like a second layer, and, and I've said this before, I do basically three layers of color. The first one is a blocking in stage just to get the idea of what I'm after. Now the second layer is more of a refining layer, but still trying to establish the idea that I'm after, just with more detail, with more color. And then the final step, the final stage, which is not necessarily a single layer, can be kind of separated into several layers, the way that I blend them together. That's more of a, a true refining layer, to refine it to that finished result. So this is to get it close, that final layer will be to smooth it out, to really blend things together, add the details, make sure that color is correct where I want it. So again, I'm kind of blending it, fading it as I get higher up. I'm going to get more color now. I was obviously going to need some more here. Gray and white. Touch of black. I'm just going to continue to fill in this area all the way across until it's nice and blocked in. Going over a couple areas. a second time just to make sure that color's on there covering the canvas. Okay, looking good. I'm gonna wash my brush. And now I'm talking about, I'm gonna be mixing that color I'm I've been talking about that's higher up in the mountains. It's gonna have more of a, a washed out tone, not quite as light as the original blue we have here, something in between. I'm gonna take some gray and mix it with my cobalt blue. We're gonna go ahead and take all the paint here. Mix some gray, probably take some white as well. I can kind of see the blue I have on the palette here already, so I kind of know where, where I'm at in relation to that color. More gray and white.
may be close. A little more white. Okay, I think we've got it. Mix some water in there. And basically what I'm going to do is fill in the rest of the area Kind of fade it downwards. I'm going to fill in the rest of the area that's sort of up high. I'm not going to worry too much about the, the meadows that I want to have up there. I'm going to add a touch more white. Okay, now there's going to be some areas that go up into the red as well. We've got some shoots here carved out in the mountain. So I'll do my best just to kind of sketch those in. Pretty rough. This is a very key color because it's in between the darks and the lights, so it's going to be used as a, a kind of a, a transition, but obviously a transition, but it's also going to be kind of setting the pattern that we have. It's going to be, you can see I'm kind of shading with it, so it's going to give us that, that, uh, that effect, that illusion of three-dimensionality. So some of the areas of this color are going this way, some of the areas are going more so this way, and depending on the angle of these areas with this color, it's gonna determine how the mountain looks. So if a mountain is sliding this way, I'll, we want our streaks to go that way. If there's, the mountain is sliding this way, we want our streaks to go that way. And we can also use it to kind of poke up, 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 just to add some small tree detail. Looks like little mini trees back there. Pretty far away. Add some more water, keep it flowing. Okay, now when I get down into this area, I kind of want to blend it into the blue. So get down into this area and kind of blend it into the blue. So, the reason this is a lighter color, let's talk about why we're using this color rather than all the, this darker blue. The reason that this is a lighter color is because there's more light shining across through the valley and that's creating a haze in the sky and that haze dilutes the color. So it's also just more atmosphere as we get further back into the mountain. These trees are closer down here these ones up here are a little bit further back. So we want a nice blend into this color and it's gonna just create that illusion of more air in between, which creates depth in the painting. So that's why we're going with a more diluted, muted type of color. The 
again, little, little pat, 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 because you have to remember that this color, our tr this color is, is creating the illusion of trees. And so those trees have little patterns. Don't use straight edges like we used with the top of the mountain. Little pat motions, because again, these, these are trees. Okay, now right here, we've got more of a crevice sneaking up again. I think this is called Lone Peak. Really beautiful mountain. Very rocky. I have came right across, right through here. And I walked through these trees and then over uh, through this bowl here. Very rocky. It was a really difficult hike. So I know this mountain well. It's a very unforgiving mountain. It's beautiful though. Little trees. Now I'm starting to create that texture of trees. So back here, we've got more shadow casted on this side of the mountain, and we're going to have these, and I'm using this color, we're going to have these shadows, and this is where our trees are going to be. And depending on the brush you have, you know, it, you've just got to find a brush that works well for you as you pat. Some brushes might not create a great texture for this. This one just kind of automatically does it for me. You can see it's a very frayed old brush, but it still holds, holds its weight. It does what it needs to do. This is a prime example of how, of why I'm not a fan of expensive or fan, fancy brushes. This is about the most beat up old brush you could find, and it works perfectly for me. Okay, get some more of that color. Still got plenty of it. And again, just kind of fade it down into the color we have. A little more water, mix it in. Just kind of blend it out. Wash off my hands, make sure they're nice and clean. Have this go more, more straight off the, off the canvas rather than angled down. I think the composition. I don't like how everything slides downwards. I like to have things kind of maybe wrap up towards the edge. Just kind of keeps the weight of the picture overall nice and centered. Don't want to feel like it's melting. Right into that color again, blend it out. Okay. I'm going to pull it, these colors. Some more water. I guess I've got water in my palette already. Get some more water mix in there. And I'm going to pull some of these colors to the right. Only on the right side. Because, of course, sun's coming from the left. 
casting a shadow. So there's going to be some drag, you could say, on some of these tree shadows. So look at that. Just as I go across, look how cool that is. You just create the illusion of shadows. Really neat. Look at how that old brush kind of creates multiple trees at the same time. Okay, now, real quick, the last thing that I'm going to be doing just to, to wrap up the background, and this is where it's going to get very tedious, is we need to keep working on the trees. Now, there's not going to be as much detail down here in the blue. A lot of it's going to be in the shade, so it's going to appear kind of shadowish doesn't make much sense it's going to appear very diluted um, there's just not as much detail when we have nice crisp sunlight shining across the top of the mountain up here we're going to be able to see more detail so we're going to focus our detail up here down here not quite as much the only thing that i'll be doing is i'll probably take a color similar to this and i'll be adding some detail some tree detail just like this the same thing we're doing up top and this is actually going to be the same, this is the hot, the, the shadows up here, but down here will actually appear to be the highlights within the shadows. So I'll do a little bit of this detailed work down low, and I'll have to just clean up some of the edges of our meadows. But up top, we want to work on some other, some, some highlights of the trees. And... Those highlights are going to be, let's see here, so I'm going to mix a gray tone similar to what we started with right here. So I'm going to mix that same value, which is different color, about the same contrast though, still a little too dark. Add more white, and then there's going to be a touch of red. Not a lot though, so I'm going to take most of it off my brush and then mix it in. Let me test it over here. Okay, I think that's going to be close. We could probably take some more black. Maybe I've got a little more red here. Touch more red. Not much though. We want it to be fairly gray when compared to what we've got. Now, what I'm going to do is start going through. And I might switch to a liner brush at some point. I could start with this, this larger brush. I'm going to start creating the texture of trees. And it's going to be more of a gray color rather than, and I know trees are green, but when they're this far back, they're gonna appear more gray. So I'm just gonna go through this, these areas and I'll break up some of the shadows. Just dot, 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 and you'll see me go all over the place with this color. Break up some of the shadows because we're gonna have some tall trees sticking up in those shadows. And as I begin to add more and more of this color, you're going to see that all of a sudden it'll look like there's little trees scattered across here. So I'm just going to keep poking at this. This is going to take a while. So I'm going to speed it up. And then when I finish, I'm just going to do the same thing. And I might switch to a liner brush, just adding some even more concentrated detail. And then we'll slow it down. We'll get to the next step.
Okay, so I'm kind of in between here and I wanted to just slow it down and just talk about what I'm doing. So you saw me add, you see I've got these, this slightly different color here. It's a darker, kind of a more of a pinkish gray and I've got it through here and then up through here, and down through here. I added it over here. All I did was I mixed that same color that I originally put on the mountain and then I just added a bit more black and a bit more red. And so it just brought it a little bit more towards that, that, that red scale and then it just dampened it down a bit. And so when I applied it, it created a lot of cool texture and I went around the bowl. So like I said, this is a bowl that's sliding out and you can see that on the reference photo. By adding this color, it gave a lot of cool texture to the mountains in between the trees, but it also created that illusion of that bowl actually looking like it's there, like concave in the mountain. So that's what I did to the mountain itself. And then the trees, you saw me just continue to poke at the trees, poke at the trees. Now I'm not done yet. I want to break up some of those trees slightly. But before I do, I want to, and I know I go, talk about this in a lot of my videos, I go, I like to go back and forth, build it up at the same time. So I've got a good portion of this done. Now this part of the trees looks pretty good to me. It's fairly broken up, but these part of the trees over in here are not quite, I'd like to have some more broken up patterns in these trees as well. But I've decided to move on to the blue before I wrap up the trees, before I get ahead of myself. And so what I'm gonna do with this blue is start to break up the blue the same way that I've kind of done up above. And I'm switching to, you've seen me switch to a smaller brush. I've just got a round brush here. This is a number three round. And what I'm gonna be doing down below, I've got some cobalt blue, some white, some gray. And I'm gonna try to shoot for the color that I originally mixed for the meadows through here. It's a little more white with that. That's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be closer. Let's just stick with that for right now. And what I'm gonna do is basically break up a lot of these areas. I could actually, I, I think I need more blue. It'll be good enough for now. I'm just gonna add more blue to that. A little bit of that uh, light blue permanent as well. Something similar to this color that I've got dried on the palette here. Okay, so I'm just gonna be going through these areas. I'm gonna be thinking about in reverse. These trees that are sitting here, I want portions where you can see through the trees. It'll actually be the rocks on the ground, the very rocky mountain. So I'm gonna just add this broken up pattern to the blue down below. And what that's going to do is start to just reaffirm our minds when we're looking at it, that it actually is trees. You just have to create that pattern, that correct pattern. And it'll make more sense, the more we break up both sides, then it'll kind of make sense, they'll play off of each other, make us believe it even more that these are trees. So I'm gonna go through the entire blue area just look for places that I can sort of add this texture. There's really no way to go around it. If you want to have realism in your painting, and so a good example is we could take, we could take this area right here. We could add some lighter blue that's kind of extending off of this area that's poking down. And then what that does is kind of in our minds, we think, oh, okay, so that's what this looks like in the light. And then 
this is exactly what it looks like in the shadows. And so anywhere else where this color exists, it kind of makes sense to us. It's the same kind of thing as this streak goes down, I kind of continued that down into here and I'll add a couple more spots right there and there. And same thing right here. We've got a light area that touches the dark. And if we continue that, into the shadows, it's just gonna make our minds make sense of it. So anyways, I'm gonna keep going, breaking this up. And you'll see me add all sorts of texture down below here. And then, like I said, when I get way down below, I might add actually some, some highlights, maybe just some slightly lighter color blues, just to add a little bit more texture to the trees down low. And after that, we're gonna be really close. I'll slow it down, we'll talk about it one more time.
Well, I've got this to a stage that I'm pretty happy with. You saw me just kind of go back and forth. Uh, I mixed some of this color and just spotted it downwards into the darker blues. And then in reverse, I mixed some of this darker blue and I kind of spotted it back up over the top just so that all of this was more evenly blended. And then I just added some details to some of these meadows through here. But for the most part, and I also broke up some of these trees, I'm feeling really good about this. And when I get to a stage uh, such as this, when I get to this point, especially when a painting has a lot of blue in it, it can be really difficult to judge whether it's too blue or whether there's not enough color in the highlighted area or just all kinds of things that you start to contemplate in your head. And the biggest thing that, that I've learned how to deal with this, of trying to determine is this, at this point, at this stage of the painting, is it right or not, is, is to just forget about it and instead work on the rest of the painting. And what you're contemplating, what you're questioning yourself about will be answered automatically as you get to the rest of the painting. So as we begin to add the foreground, the rest of the painting, it, it'll just fall into place. We'll know at that point whether or not this is too blue or too not. It's really difficult to tell right now. I may want to just lighten up or, or dull down some of the blues up high, but it's really difficult to judge. So what I wanna do to this at this point is move on to the foreground. And I'm gonna have the foreground, um, in detail in the, in the next video that I do. So we'll, we'll get started on this real quick, but then I'll detail it in another video. But real quick, before I get to that, I wanna to touch on the sky one more time. And I'm gonna take my round blender brush, or I could use this double thick filbert, something with a nice round edge. And first thing, get a little moisture on that. I'm going to pick up some white, just some nice solid white. Now you can see that going on. It's a bit brighter than what I have. So I'm just going to add some subtle highlights to the clouds. And again, this is kind of the same thing with the clouds. The entire painting, in fact, whether you've got it to a point where it's good enough or not, it's really difficult to say until you get the rest of the painting done. Right now we've got a lot of a lot of color on the on the canvas, but we don't have our darks established yet. And that's kind of the biggest indicator. When you compare it with the darkest darks, you really know then whether or not this might be too blue or the clouds uh, are light enough or dark enough or have enough contrast. But I do know that I want some solid white in the clouds, so that's why I'm adding it right now. Just a couple highlights. And I'll probably play around with it more when I get closer to finishing. Just some simple highlights. Pretty easy. I'm just going to leave it as is. And in fact, one thing I might know about this so far, I'm gonna need to get some more blue. I do think I think I've got a little bit of this light blue permanent still wet. I do think I can get away with some darker blue, some more of a more saturated blues in the sky. Let's see what this is like. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna wash this blue. It's going on pretty thin right now. I'm gonna dip my fingers in some water. Just kind of fan that out. Now the texture of the canvas is somewhat showing through, but That's all right, because I can go back over with oils in the end, kind of touch up. But I do know that I want some more vibrant blue in the sky.
just up high. And I'm not going to do too much right now. You can already tell that it's going to be better to wait to do this with oils, but got a slight adjustment that I've made. Step closer. That's looking good. Okay. So what I wanted to show you at the end here, I'm going to go back to our big flat brush and a whole bunch of black I'm going to grab. And along with that black, I'm going to pick up, I've got light green permanent. I'm just going to add some of that to the black. Just enough where I can just barely see it. And what I'm going to do is begin to block in. Now, I'm not, not going to go too far up into the blues. I will once I start adding detail to the trees. But for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and block in the areas that I know for sure are going to have black. And that's basically everything that I've left in white. So I'm going to make some short, stubby looking trees. And they're going to be taller when I'm finished. But I thought this would be a great way to finish off this video, just to show you how much of a difference it can make when you start to get your darks in place. Black, some green. So these trees, like I said, will go up much higher, but there'll be some short ones. So we're just going to start that. And I'm sure you can see already how that really makes the blues look a lot different. All of a sudden, the blues don't look quite so vibrant, do they? And I think I can tell already that I don't need to dull them down. I think they're going to be just fine. Now that I got this black on here, it's looking pretty good. All right, so I'm not going to reveal what I'm going to do next, but it's going to be pretty fun down below. I'm just going to call this a day right here. And that is looking pretty good. Well, as always, thank you so much for watching. If you had questions, you know what I say, leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to join the discussion. Now this painting, I'm really excited for. There's gonna be a lot of transformations going on in the foreground. It's really just beginning. There's a lot left to do with this painting. So stay tuned for the next video where I complete the foreground. I'll do a lot of work on the trees and I'm gonna be adding a couple things in addition to what the reference photo has. If you'd like to support my channel, please be sure to check out my free print giveaway as well as my eBay auctions and website. I auction off all the paintings I do here on the videos through my eBay. All of those links are in the description below. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.